Thank you for joining with us today. The message today is about the touch of Jesus, the touch of Jesus. I don't know if you can recall and you think back a little bit when we got back into international sport and international, yeah, just when we were welcomed back into the international community a number of years ago, just how incredible it was to participate in international sport again, to, to listen to musicians and artists that came from around the world uh, to South Africa and just the kind of anticipation that we had because of that. It's just wonderful to see them, be they cricketers, rugby players, whatever it is, footballers, tennis players, pop stars, whoever came to the country. It was delightful to be able to see them, especially to see them live. And to see young boys and girls at the same time going out and maybe some not so young carrying around with them cricket bats or rugby balls or caps or whatever it is, wanting them to be signed by these mega stars. And I know just to get the players to talk to them or get the players to shake their hands or get the players to give them an autograph was something that they kind of remember for the rest of their lives, especially if that was you. But I suppose it is driven by a thrill, a thrill to be near or to touch your favorite hero, your living hero. It is something that you'll remember for a long, long time. I can remember a few years ago when Queen Elizabeth came to Port Elizabeth. It was still called Port Elizabeth then. <laughs> My children were a lot younger and many thousands lined the routes in and around Port Elizabeth to see the Queen. And we stood there for a long time with two young children. And then she came past us in like a flash as she drove past us to the airport. For some people too, it's a great thrill to see the Pope. And when the Pope goes through with the Pope Mobile, you see on TV through the streets, the people kind of mob his vehicle and line the streets for a long, long time. And of course, there are many others that, that, that have done that as well. But I can remember many years ago finding myself in St. Peter's Square at the Vatican City. And there I looked up and there in the window, far, far away, was a figure dressed in white. I think it was Pope John Paul II. I think it was. But I can just imagine how people get excited. And even Pope Francis, when he travels around the world, seems to draw thousands of people waving and just maybe getting close to him, maybe just even having their sh his shadow fall across their path kind of thing. And I remember too, when Mother Teresa came to Port Elizabeth a number of years too ago, there were people that went out wanting to see her, to touch her. And I know she used to give out little medallions uh, to people as well if you came up to her and so people were throwing themselves kind of at her feet just to be touched by her or to have some kind of story they could tell after that and they must have felt i don't know somehow closer to god and maybe they felt extremely blessed when they met someone like mother Teresa. but the desire for physical touch is a powerful motivation think about it god has put millions of nerves and whatever in our fingers and our hands for touching before covid you could shake hands with someone you could put your arm around someone, you could, you could hug someone, and yeah, you could run your fingers through your child's hair, so easily your grandchild's hair. Hug your children, holding your grandchildren, even play wrestle with some of them. Ah, it seems so long ago now. But shaking hands with friends, embracing fellow believers is something we've always found special in the church. I think even the frozen chosen amongst us don't mind shaking a hand in the party of the peace. Well, most of you, I know. But the physical touch of another person is a wonderful thing. And that is one of the things we're probably missing right now under this kind of COVID regime that we're living under. And now we've gone to fist bumps and we've gone to chicken wing hellos. And so you don't know if you're coming with a chicken wing or a fist bump or whatever it is. But research, research shows that babies that are held, caressed, kissed, Develop better, better emotionally. I heard recently of a lonely man who had no family who would take himself off for a haircut and a hair wash once a week just to be touched by someone. Touch or vitamin T is important. Not only in the physical touch, but there's also the emotional touch. Have you ever been touched by something that has really moved you? Have you had your emotions touched by a tragedy? And maybe your emotions have been touched this past week or so as we've cried over our country and the things we've seen, the looting and the violence that has gone on in our country. Maybe that's touched you emotionally. But have you ever watched a movie? Maybe with your significant other and you find that you get yourself wiping away a tear. Most of the time in our house it happens the other way because the girls will cry even when they watch Nemo. <laughs> but occasionally they might look across 
and see a little kind of tear in the eye there. We try and disguise it very well as men. But, so there's physical touch and there's emotional touch. But there's also something called the spiritual touch. The spiritual touch. A spiritual touch is when Jesus touches your heart. A spiritual touch is deeper, far deeper than a physical touch or an emotional touch. Because when Jesus touches your heart, your life is changed forever. Your life is transformed forever. And you can never, ever, ever be the same again. And you see, that is the big idea for us today. All of us have experienced physical touch in our lives. All of us have experienced emotional touch. But the question is, have you experienced the spiritual touch of the Lord Jesus Christ? Someone once wrote a song, and it goes like this. And like you can see, I'm really living in the past at the moment because Elvis sang the song. So just imagine that Elvis voice, that role that he used to sing, that vibrato that he used to sing with. Since I met the blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened now and I know he touched me and he made me whole. The song is called He Touched Me and just go and check it out on YouTube. Elvis sings a beautiful version of it. But in the book of Acts chapter 5, we find there's, there's, there's this kind of phenomenon that's happening. The apostle Peter is in the temple, on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. He's walking through Solomon's colonnade. These were kind of the areas that surrounded the temple where, where the money changers and all those kind of folk were. And they would go and meet in certain parts of the colonnade and they would teach. And so listen to this people of the cross. Coming to us from the from book of Acts. The apostles formed many signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet in Solomon's colonnade. As a result, people brought those who were ill in the streets, laid them on beds and mats, so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from towns around Jerusalem, Scripture says, bringing those who were ill, those who were tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that amazing? Because men and women believed in Messiah Jesus. People brought their sick into the streets. People laid them on their beds and their mats. So just the shadow of Peter might fall on them as he passed by. Not even a touch. Just a shadow. People saw in Peter the healing power done in the name of Jesus. Later, again in Acts chapter 19... Paul was in Ephesus, and the Apostle Paul did extraordinary miracles there with God's power upon him. Listen to this. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that touched him were taken to those who were ill. Their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. Do you get that? Just the power of the anointing, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God. Even handkerchiefs and aprons that were touched were taken to the sick, their illnesses were healed and evil spirits left them. If this phenomenon was true of Peter and Paul, can you imagine being in the company of Jesus? How much more when you're in the company of the Son of God? While on earth Jesus made himself available to people going from town to town, house to house, he ate with tax collectors and sinners, easily talked to people of every social class, slave and free, Jew and Gentile, men, women and children. Whoever came to him, he never turned away. The people often crowded around him and many took the initiative to, have, to come near to Jesus and to touch him. And remember, he's a rabbi. They're not supposed to touch him, but he allowed that to happen. In Mark chapter 6, which is our gospel reading today, verses 53 to 56, hear this. And I'm reading from the, the, the Tree of Life version. After they crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and set anchor there. Gennesaret's another name for Galilee. As they got out of the boat, immediately people recognized Yeshua. They ran about the region and began to carry around on their mats all those who were in bad shape, to wherever they heard he was. And whenever he entered villages, towns, or countryside, people were placing their sick in the marketplaces and begging him to let them touch even the tzitzit, the, the prayer shawl of his garment, those little tassels on the prayer shawl of his garment, and all who touched it were being healed. So get this picture into your minds. Just after Jesus had fed 5,000 people, imagine that, fed 5,000 people, which showed the blessing, the abundance that the Messiah had come. It's a sign of the Messiah. People brought their sick to Jesus and begged him to let the sick just touch the hem, 
the, the tassels on his prayer shawl. And all who touched him were healed. Interesting. Also in the Bible, Luke also captures different scenes with Jesus as well. In chapter 6, it says that people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and he was healing them all. In Luke chapter 18, people were also bringing babies to have Jesus touch them. Oh, what a joy, what a blessing to feel the warmth of Jesus' touch. And Luke mentions Jesus' touch more often than Matthew and Mark. The power of touch by a doctor or a therapist even today enhances healing. Touch, of course, must always be appropriate. Be it on the arm or the shoulder, a gentle embrace or a hug. And I know we often do it at weddings, we often do it at funerals and occasions of great joy and occasions of great sadness. I mean, babies need to be touched. Babies need to be cuddled. Babies need to be held so they can grow and they can develop normally. Our children need to be touched and hugged. Um, even during the teen years, it needs to happen as well. But it conveys a message louder than words could say. We care for you and we care about you. It gives encouragement and it gives hope. And I must say, my children's generation hug a lot more than we ever hugged in my generation. But adults too need to be touched. We need to do it in appropriate times and appropriate places. In a time of difficulty, in times of depression, maybe after a, a talk, maybe a handshake or maybe a hand or an arm on a shoulder or on an elbow. It just gives us that kind of understanding where the person's saying, maybe without words, hang in there. I'm here for you. I care for you. I'm praying for you. And maybe it just lifts our spirit and our hope start to soar a little bit more. Because nowadays we have to put up with virtual hugs, but one day we will hug again and hopefully when we do hug again, we will hug very often. Because contact is very important. We can't live our faith in isolation. We've got to live our faith around other people and that contact really builds us up. People in the crowds reached out to touch Jesus and he touched them with healing power. The power of God went out from him to heal. The power of God went out from him to restore. One of the most moving stories in scripture of such healing power is a well-known story of the woman who had suffered with issues of the blood for 12 years. 12 long years there had been some kind of bleeding. Doctors weren't able to heal her condition. It was beyond their expertise at the time. And she spent all her money, but there was no cure. Worse, she was considered to be an outcast from society. Ceremonially unclean. Let me pause there a minute. One of my favorite paintings which I've kind of seen a few times on my trip to, to, to the Holy Land, is at the Church of Magdala on the Sea of Galilee, which is the hometown of Mary Magdalene. That's where the name Magdalene comes from, from Magdala. The church has been erected looking over the Sea of Galilee. It's a beautiful church, spacious. Um, when you look out through the back window of the church, uh, you can see the Sea of Galilee. Uh, the pulpit is a boat, <laughs> and the, the table for communion is a boat. So you can imagine, you get this whole picture of, 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 of a fishing scene as you look out the windows. But the, one of the remarkable things is that the inside kind of chapel is dedicated to women of the Bible. And they're all the kind of various women that have had important roles to play. But there's also one for the dedicated to the unknown woman. The unknown woman. Uh, and that's all the people of faith and women of faith through the ages. But if you go down the stairs and you go down into the chapel, you will find that... Down the bottom, there's this wonderful painting. There's a mural on the wall. And all you can see is feet, dusty feet in sandals with a kind of, and you can see they're wearing white robes. And there's a hand reaching out. All you see is a hand reaching out to touch the tizzet, the prayer shawl, the, the little tassels in the prayer shawl of Jesus. That's all you can see. It's a wonderful depiction of the story. Very vivid. Because according to Leviticus 15, when a woman has a discharge of blood, she would become unclean. The poor woman, this poor woman in the story that Luke shares, had been unclean for 12 long years. No one had touched her for fear that they would become unclean so they couldn't go and worship. Understand then, when she met with Jesus, she had no intention of meeting him face to face. She realized he was a rabbi, had to keep himself holy, had to keep himself apart. And she was exactly the same woman that is on that mural in Magdala. But according to Matthew's account, she thought, if only I touch his cloak, if only I touch his prayer shawl, I will be healed. Silently and persistently and in faith, she makes her way through the crowd. If you can imagine yourself being there, 
Coming up behind the master, she bent down, leaned down, touched his prayer shawl. Sure enough, immediately the bleeding stopped, quickly slipping away. Can you imagine the surprise when Jesus turned around and said, Who touched me? Who touched me? It's interesting, about 200 years ago in France, a little boy, nine years old, name was Louis, was sitting in his father's workshop. The father was a harness maker, making harnesses for horses to go on working horses. And as the boy loved to watch his father working with leather, and someday he said to him, Someday, father, I will be like you. I will be a harness maker just like you. And his dad said, Well, you know, why don't you start now? Gave him a piece of leather, drew a design on it, gave him a hammer, gave him a, a puncher, a hole puncher, and he said, Be careful, don't hit it too hard. But in an excitement, Louis hit it and hit it, and all of a sudden he hit it, and this hole puncher clicked back and went into his eye. And in fact, it pierced his eye and he lost the sight in that eye immediately. Later, the sight in the other eye, which was also affected, was also lost. And Louis was totally blind. A few years later, Louis was sitting in a family garden when a friend handed him a pine cone. And he ran his fingers, his sensitive fingers, over this pine cone. And this idea became, came to him. And he became enthusiastic and began to create an alphabet of dots and raised dots on paper so that blind people could interpret what had been written. That is Louis Braille who opened up a whole new world to all kinds of people because of an accident. Louis Braille opened a whole new world to people because of power of the touch of their fingers. And so just think how Jesus must have changed the life of those he came across, those he healed. They didn't have hospitals and things like we have today. And he changed the life of this woman by the power of his touch. And it opened a whole new world for her. When the crowd were pressing in on him from every side, Peter found it a strange question. When Jesus insisted, someone touch me because I know the power has flowed out of me, the power has gone out of me. The woman knew that she had no choice but to come to Jesus. She came trembling. Would he be angry? Would he scold her? Would he tell her off? Would he harshly reject her? He's a rabbi. He's supposed to be kept holy and ceremonially clean. After all, she'd been unclean for all these years. She managed to tell him the story. Tell him the story of her misery, her feeling of despair, her burden that she'd, she'd, she'd borne as an outcast. She took a huge risk in the presence of all these people in the crowd. How the bleeding had stopped. How she'd been healed. She gave the testimony. And no doubt that story came out of the mixture of tears, with sadness, and with great joy. See the tender compassion of our Savior. Perhaps Jesus placed his hand on her shoulder. I don't know, but you can imagine him doing that. And then he called her daughter. Daughter is the only place in Scripture where Jesus uses the term daughter. He says, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. And so surely she remembered these words for the rest of her life. And by faith she had been healed, not only physical healing, but also spiritually. She had been welcomed into, into the Savior's family of believers. With this kind of parting and blessing, go and go in peace. Her life had been turned around. All became new because in faith she had touched Jesus, who then touched her with his healing power. And she was never the same again after that. Make no mistake about it. The healing, saving power of Jesus is just as real today as it was way back then. After all, he is the eternal son of God. His power goes out to us just like it went out to this woman who humbled himself because she believed in Jesus. She reached out in faith. She touched and we can touch him in, as we reach out to him in prayer, calling upon his name. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, Paul writes that Jesus, in terms of the spirit power, is the Son of God. The moment that we, yes, little old you and me, believe in Jesus, the power through the Holy Spirit comes into our lives. It's a power that miraculously opens, opens and softens our hard-earned hearts. So that we believe, and when we believe in the power of His blood that was shed on the cross, it washes away all our sins and all our uncleanness. It's the power of His life-giving Spirit that heals all our, 
all the wounds of our sins, our spiritual wounds, and makes us new persons to live in a new obedience to Him. And when we reach out to touch Jesus in the personal quiet of our bedroom, maybe that's in an old age home, maybe while you're walking out in nature on top of a mountain or walking out on the beach or just watching a sunset, or even if you're in a large crowd, the biggest event you ever attended, you can receive a touch of power that is so real from God, through, so real from Jesus. And you know what? When that happens, you will never, ever, 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 ever be the same again. We all have a different view of the world, of yourself, of others, and you will have a whole new different outlook on life. More than that, Jesus doesn't want anyone who's been touched by Him, whom He has touched with His healing power, to slip away unnoticed. Just like that woman wasn't allowed to slip away unnoticed after she'd been healed. He wants us and He calls us, come out of the crowd, come out of the crowd, come to me. Therefore, come out of hiding. Tell him about your sin. Tell him about your misery. Tell him about the mistakes you made in the past. Tell him about your fears, your failures. But he also wants you to tell him about your thankfulness. Maybe with tears of joy about our healing, of our spiritual connection with God after years of disconnect. How his powerful touch has changed our lives and how we will never, ever, ever, ever be the same again. The only real peace you or anyone can have is peace with God which comes through faith in His Son, Jesus the Messiah. Are you healed? Have you had a spiritual touch? Do you have a lasting peace with God? If so, praise the Lord right now where you are. If you're not and, and you're doubting God's goodness right now because your circumstances or stuff you've seen on TV or whatever it is, or you, you have COVID fatigue at the moment and you know that you need to do something, I just again say reach out reach out and touch jesus touch him through prayer come to know him through reading the scripture and once and for all reach out to him because his healing power and his abiding peace for your life will come and you will never ever ever be the same again after the touch of jesus there's a song that goes like this reach out and touch the lord as he passes by You'll find him not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment, your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Use that opportunity today. Reach out and touch our wonderful Savior through prayer and through the others he surrounded you with who love you and love Jesus. Bless you all. Have a great day.